Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Mercedes SL55 AMG. So it was approximately a year ago this week that I collected this beautiful example of an SL55. I'll link to the video up here in the top right of the collection and introducing this car to the channel. And you may recall that probably the main reason that I was uh, so smitten with this car was this fantastic berry red interior. It wasn't a particularly kind of sensible or logical reason for choosing this car other than the interior was just so unique and unusual that that was a good enough reason for me. So in this video we're going to look back at the first year of ownership of this beautiful SL55 and I'll be talking about how much it's cost me uh, in maintenance over that period and what I've had to do. So hopefully it should be useful and interesting for anyone considering the purchase of an SL from the R230 line and in particular an SL55. So if you're new to the channel thank you so much for stopping by I really hope you enjoy it and if you like this kind of content with a couple of AMG Mercedes and also a Ferrari 360 Modena then it'd be great to have you as a subscriber. So just a bit of history on my experience with SLs. My first SL was a 500 which I purchased uh, back in 2018 after I sold my original CL500 with which I started this channel. I wanted something that was a little bit more sporty if you like and the CL while being a fantastic luxury car was not quite what I was after and I was also looking for something with a convertible, love the open top motoring experience. So I purchased an SL500 uh, back in 2018. I really enjoyed that but um, having sold it I, I, I kind of missed it a lot and so in about August of last year I started looking for another SL but this time I thought I would look for the SL55. Now the SL500 has got a you know a great V8 engine but really the SL55 is in a bit of a class of its own with the fantastic M113K supercharged engine which really sets this car apart from the SL500. So I looked at a number of these cars up for sale at the time and this one really caught my eye. Uh, it was in a beautiful silver which I always think is a great colour for the SLs uh, but it was different because of this interior. Normally they are you know they're black or, or grey um, but I'd never seen a red one before and it really made me think this is the one that I want to have on the channel and the one that I ended up buying. So just talking generally for a little while about the SL, um, I really think it is one of the most versatile and practical Grand Tourers that you can, you can get. Firstly, I love the uh, metal folding hardtop. I think that really does make this car uh, basically two cars in one. When the roof is up, it has the, uh, the feeling of a coupe, but obviously you have that ability to drop the roof and have the open top motoring experience. I think that really sets this car apart from, from a lot of other convertibles. The other thing I really love about this car is the comfort and ride quality. It really is superb. The build quality, the interior comfort is, is exceptional, but also the ride quality and the, the, the long distance ability of this car is really incredible. If I had to go on a long journey, in any of my three cars, it would be this one. The ride quality on the ABC suspension is, is superb. It's incredibly relaxing. You can drive for hours in this car. I wouldn't want to do it in the C63 or the Ferrari, uh, but in this car, you can really go long distances without any problem at all. The next thing I love about this car is its, is its timeless beauty. I think the SL, the R230, version really is one of the most beautiful cars uh, ever designed and I think it will uh, maintain that that quality uh, as time passes. It still turns heads to this day 
Uh, it is a very striking looking car. I really love driving it. And I guess the last thing I really love about this car is the, is the exhaust note and this, the kind of the, the muscle car nature of this, this beautiful German beast. Um, it, has a, it has a fantastic V8 sound and gives a real enjoyment of driving when you're behind the wheel. Fantastic car, cannot recommend them highly enough. But there are some things to watch out for and uh, we'll talk about some of those uh, when, we, when we talk about the issues I've had to face this year. So in this video, we're gonna go through uh, the ownership experience of the SL55 for uh, my first year of ownership and talk a little bit about what issues we've had and uh, what expenses we've had and what things have had to be addressed during that period of ownership. And when you put your foot down, my God, it really does go. Whoa! This is a heavy car, but it can shift when it wants to. So here's the beautiful SL55, freshly washed today. Uh, we've had one of the most um, beautiful days in Sydney today, uh, kind of taste of summer really, uh, 25 degrees, but uh, there is some rain coming, so I'm gonna have to get going with this video. So I'm gonna go through some of the things that we've had to do in the one year of ownership so far. And uh, it, it's not terrible given the age of the car. It's a 2002 car and you can expect some, some issues with, with cars of this age. But um, overall, the ownership experience has been pretty good and um, it could have been a lot worse. So let's go through uh, some of the things that I had to have done and I'll give you some of the costs at the same time. So when I bought the car, I knew there were a few things that needed to be done. Um, it did have quite a thick file of uh, receipts from the previous owner and some of the things that have been done were you know, really good, such as the, the tandem pump for the ABC suspension. That's one of the things that can fail and can be very expensive, several thousand dollars uh, Australian. So that had already been done, but there were some things that needed to be done after the pre-purchase inspection. So um, we had to replace the rear uh, discs They'd replaced the pads, but hadn't replaced the discs, and they should be done at the same time. So replacing the, the rear discs was uh, $600, and bear in mind that this is all Australian dollars, so convert to your, uh, your local currency. Um, it also needed engine mounts. Again, that's uh, pretty much a consumable item. So that was $700 for the labor, and the engine mounts themselves were uh, $792. Um, there was an ABC hydraulic pipe down here which had failed. That was $350 in labor and another $393 for the pipe itself, quite expensive. Um, so that first uh, bill um, after purchase was just over $3,200 um, Australian dollars, but that really put this car back into tip-top condition ready for you know, another year of motoring. The next thing that happened um, was uh, something that started off fairly minor, basically just a, a, a mild fuel smell coming into the cabin while I filled up the tank. Um, but diagnosing that and actually fixing it turned out to be a very big job. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner at the top right of the screen here, I'll link to the playlist which deals with everything I had to go through to fix that problem. It basically meant taking out the entire rear of the car, the entire boot lining, taking out the fuel tank, which had uh, a leak in it, re-welding that, and then replacing everything. So that was expensive, not necessarily because of the repair to the tank, which was only 800 bucks, but 16 hours of labor to get the tank out and back in again. So unfortunately, that was another 3,300 Australian dollars, which is, unexpected and unforeseen but it's just one of those things. Then we had a couple of minor things done. First was the heater valve that lets hot water into the heating system to uh, generate hot air. That had uh, failed. That was $245 labor and the valve itself was $145. 
Then we had a failure of the supercharger pulley bearing, which basically starts making a grinding noise and then effectively disintegrates itself. Um, so to replace that, the labor was $345 and I bought the, the bearing on eBay for about hundred bucks or something. So pretty cheap really. And, and click on the pop out banner in the top right of the screen here uh, to see my video on the uh, supercharger uh, pulley bearing replacement. Then the final thing was a replacement of the uh, windscreen washer bottle, which actually sits somewhere under the wheel arch here. So it's not something that I could replace easily. So I, I got the shop to do that. Um, that was $220 in labor. Again, I bought a replacement uh, tank washer reservoir on eBay very cheaply uh, from a breaker's yard. I can't remember how much it was, 50, 60 bucks or something, not a lot. So that total of uh, that invoice came to $1,140. Then the final thing we've had so far this year has been um, a, a failure of one of the ABC struts. Now I've done a, a video on the pros and cons of the ABC system, which is a hydraulic uh, suspension leveling system that all these SLs have. It's a very complex, very, very um, ingenious system it can cause problems. Um, click on the pop-out banner up here to see my video on the ABC system. Uh, one of the struts, the, the back um, left strut there, um, started to fail. Uh, you could hear a knocking sound when it went over uh, a bump. Uh, clearly was the, uh, the, the strut starting to, to, to give out there. Um, I was very, very lucky to find an almost brand new strut on eBay for around about a thousand bucks, which is a bargain because if you buy them new from Mercedes, I think they're something like three or four thousand Aussie dollars. So yeah, try and get them used. This one was of a, a very high mileage SL, but looks like it had been replaced because it was in absolutely spectacular condition. So very lucky there. Um, we also replaced the accumulator reservoir, uh, which um, is a, again, it's a part that fails quite often. So I thought it was worth just replacing that at the same time. Um, total for that labor was 1,247 plus the strut. So 2,250 bucks. So in total this year, I've probably spent about $9,800 on keeping this uh, SL55 uh, maintained. I think um, the fuel tank issue is one of those things that you generally, you know, it's just bad luck. I have, I have seen on some of the forums some discussion about the fuel tanks in these SLs, but you know, you may get it, you may not. I think it was unfortunate that I had to, to spend that $3,000. I think you could probably get away with um, maintaining a car like this for probably around five or $6,000 a year, which I think for a car of this age and this kind of complexity is, is pretty good going. So look, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Just my experience of owning this fantastic car for a year. I still love it. I still think it looks absolutely stunning. Still turns heads wherever it goes. It's got that timeless design which I think will, will certainly stand the test of time and uh, will continue to look good uh, for many years to come. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to smash that like. It really does help me. Um, please subscribe if you like this kind of content. Uh, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more of my videos. You can follow me on Instagram uh, down here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.